is it 10? All right, so we can get, now we can get started. Yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome to the August 10th meeting of the City of Davenport Zoning Board of Adjustment. The Zoning Board of Adjustment holds public hearings to consider the strict application of the zoning ordinances for hardship variances, special uses, and appeals. I'm Dan Darlin, Chairman of the Davenport Zoning Board of Adjustment. Members present today are from your left to right, Mike Galliart, Bridget Boyd Carlson, Vice, oh, well, Mike's Vice Chair, Bridget Boyd Carlson, myself, and Jeff Blumker. Um, staff present today are Laura Berkeley, Scott Copes, and Attorney Mallory Bagby. If you have mobile devices, please turn them off as it may interfere with the room's electronics. As we conduct our business, we expect that everyone here will conduct themselves in a respectful, courteous, and civil manner, and will speak only after being recognized by the chair. The only exception to this standard is that staff is expected to interject when necessary to ensure we are properly conducting our business. If anyone wishes to speak on a particular agenda item, you will be provided an opportunity to do so. When recognized by me, please step to the podium, introduce yourself, and provide your input. Uh, by practice, each person is only permitted one opportunity to speak. Exceptions to that practice is at my discretion. Of course, if a board member asks a question of anyone, they'll be permitted to speak to answer that question, but I'll ask that you keep your response limited to that specific question. Um, so for Secretary's report, any corrections to the minutes from our last meeting? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I think we have a couple. Um, in the first, uh, first paragraph, it was Vice Chairman Galliard called the Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting to order. Um, and I think it had you as abstained, Mr. Chairman, Darlin abstained, it'd be absent, right? Right. Um, we, we talked to, uh, the chairman before, um, because he had to abstain, we didn't make him physically a attended. Oh, in gotcha. Person. Okay. Okay. So I guess that would be it, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Thank you. With that uh, correction, if we open the meeting, um, I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion passes. Um, before we go to the first business, I would like to point out that we have a, uh, a member of the Boy Scouts, uh, one of the local troops with us tonight, who is attending um, as part of his citizenship in the community merit badge. Uh, they are required to attend one local government, so city, township, county, um, civic meeting of some sort. So uh, Benny Jacobs Meyer is here with us this afternoon. Um, First order of business is um, uh, request HV 23-12 of John Trimble at 6230 Telegraph Road for a hardship variance to construct a 1,920 square foot detached garage, 40 by 48, um, which exceeds the allowed area by 1,120 square feet. Um, the rest will be in the staff report, so no reason to read that twice. Um, is the applicant here? Yes. Okay, great. Um, may I have a staff report, please? Scott Copes, DNS. Um, the request is to exceed the allowed garage size with a 40 foot by 48 foot pole barn. Um, the area is nearly 2,000 square feet, 1920 to be exact. Um, the property is allowed to have a detached garage up to 50% of the dwelling area of the house, which is 1,600. So they're allowed to have 800 square foot of garage by right without a variance. Um, the combined garage area of the property would exceed the area of the principal use by 920 square feet. So this is the site. The property line is outlined in yellow. Um, the proposed garage would be uh, back out in the corner here. 
the northwest corner. And here is the proposed site plan. Um, they have plenty of space on the side setback to the west. That's not an issue at all. Same for the rear setback. There's no issue there. Um, the extension of the driveway is proposed to be paved. And uh, again, that's a 40 by 48 uh, square foot uh, proposed garage. I did kind of put a red dashed over line here because it wasn't to scale really at all. You know, they had the 40 feet wider than the 48 feet. Um, so I just kind of put the red triangle there to show what closer to what the actual shape of the garage is going to be. So again, from the staff report, this is where this table is taken. 50% of the living area or 720 square feet, whichever is greater, um, is allowed for a detached garage. Since this house is 1,600 feet, they can go beyond the bare minimum of 720 and they can do an 800 square foot garage by right. Um, the garages in in our districts are allowed as a, an accessory structure. Uh, basically, that means it's a detached structure located on the same lot as the principal building that is incidental to the use of the principal building. So an incidental, incidental use is secondary uh, to the primary use. It's limited in nature and it is an accompanying but not a major part of a principal use. Incidental uses are generally smaller or lesser than the principal use of a property. So in the case with the application here today, we have a proposal that would result in more storage area than we have living area on the property. And in staff's opinion, that's not a incidental use or accessory use. Here's just some information from our tax, par tax uh, parcel report. Um, this is where we go to get the size of the house that got the 1,600 square feet there. And it has the size of the existing garage at 600 square feet. And here's just a little diagram. Um, the overall rectangle, the, the blue in, or the, uh, the gray and the green together, that's the proposed size of the garage. The green area is what is allowed by right. Um, it, it is worth noting that the applicant has a, an RV that is, I think it's at 31 feet, or I'm sorry, 36 feet along, but we can verify that later. But so you could have a, an RV fit in the 20 by 40 um, green area without a variance. So it is possible to build a garage on the property, meet the code, and still fit an RV in a garage. Um, Here's just one of the existing. Could, yep. Could you back up? Was that just a typo? The 40 by 80 should be 40 by 48. And the parentheses below the 1920 square feet. Yes. Sorry. Okay. About that. Okay. Yep. And so here's a photo um, of the site. And you can see in the rear, there's a small shed that's going to be removed. Uh, the driveway is going to be extended. And here's a photo of the site uh, prior to the owner's purchase of the property. And this is a photo after they've purchased the property. Uh, we do not have any building elevations submitted. Uh, we did do notices to the four adjacent property owners within 200 feet and we have no responses. And now I'll get into the analysis of the report. Um, item number one, ordinance created hardship. Uh, the applicant has stated that damage would occur to the RV and their equipment without a garage. Um, staff's response is that items owned by the petitioner and protecting items or protecting them is not grounds for a hardship variance. Um, excessive garage area is considered a convenience to the petitioner. They're allowed to have 800 square feet without a variance. Item number two, physical and topographical conditions of the site limiting development. Um, 
The applicant doesn't state that there are any physical or, or limiting conditions to the property. Um, staff uh, accordingly has said that there's no evidence of this creating a hardship, and so they do not meet the second standard. Third standard, um, demonstrable evidence exists establishing a unique circumstance. The applicant has stated that there's other garages in the neighborhood that exceed 50% of their uh, <clears throat> living space of the adjacent structures. Um, when looking at unique circumstance, it's unique to the property. It's not comparing the property to other locations. Additionally, uh, some of those properties may be non-conforming, illegal, or maybe you had a variance. So there's different reasons for that situation. Um, adjacent or neighboring non-conforming properties are not unique circumstances to this property. No evidence has been presented in the request as such. Number four, uh, the applicant has stated that the rural agricultural nature of the area of this building would not alter the essential character of the locality. People would not be surprised to see the addition of a nice storage shed on the property. Staff's comments are that the granting of the request would impact the character of the neighborhood. Uh, with this overly large garage, the structure would exceed the size of the dwelling by 157%. And staff's findings, the petitioner has not demonstrated any practical difficulties or particular hardships associated with this property or for the needs of the additional garage space beyond the allowed 800 square feet other than convenience. The proposed structure would exceed the allowed detached garage area requirements by 157%. 57% and would exceed the living area of the structure by 920 square feet, essentially making the primary or principal use of the property uh, storage. Staff's recommendation is that the hardship ha has not met our standards for approval and we recommend denial as proposed. All right, thank you. Um, are there any questions of board members to staff? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I do have a question. Scott, um, do you know the relationship from uh, where this address is to the city boundaries? Yeah, it's probably maybe a quarter mile or maybe even up to a mile. Um, there's Utah Avenue further to the west and okay. then there's 280 and then there's the City limits. So the city limits is right along 280, pretty much, or? I believe so, yes. Okay. Can you flip back to um, overhead that shows the adjacent properties? Oh, that was good. That's fine, the one that shows the lots. Uh, oh, the lots. With the yellow lines. You went past Oh, them. you want the very, the notice. Yeah, that slide, that shows it well. Um, are all those the same zone, zoning? Yes, they are all the same zone A1. Okay. I'm sorry, that's the old designation. The new designation is S-AG, which is ag as well. So they're all zoned agricultural? Right. Mr. Coburn, the petitioner were to build a compliant building, they'd still be allowed to build a carport to accommodate the RV? Like press it's, it's on you it's it's closer on. to you oh, okay. <laughs> sorry if the petitioner were to build a compliant building uh, within within regulation would they still be allowed to to build a carport uh, to accommodate the RV yes they would okay. so they could have an 800 square foot garage and a carport off the side um, of it or something I guess I I thought you meant just carport in general um, in addition, in addition to, uh, a, a I don't know if the carport would be big enough for his particular RV. Um, so the general rule is carports don't exceed 576 square feet. Um, in total, all accessory structures can't exceed the um, square footage of the living area, like gross floor area okay. of the living space. So a carport would, would fall under the same same guidelines. As of, as the what, what I heard is that all couldn't exceed the, the square footage of the house where the garage can be half the square footage and all accessory buildings can't exceed the total square footage. Right. 
right. So they have to budget their their use of the three different spaces they're allotted. So they can have a attached garage, they can have a detached garage, they can have a carport, but it's restricted by the house size and the size mentioned in the chart. So the carport in the building would be considered one structure? Um, technically, I guess, yes, but the code does require if you have a carport or if you have a detached garage, it must be attached to the, the carport must be attached to the de detached garage. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Um, so at this time, if I have the applicant, uh, go ahead and step up to the podium. And um, so a couple of things. The microphone is in the ceiling right above you, so we ask okay. that you kind of stay centered there so everything can be heard and recorded. And go ahead and uh, give us your name and then um, present your request. Uh, my name is John Trimble, uh, 6230 Telegraph Road. Um, request a variance uh, to construct a 40 by 48 building um, to house my RV, uh, lawn equipment, uh, snow removal equipment, um, and just in general make the place look nicer than having stuff all around my area, I guess, the yard. <laughs> and just trying to improve, improve the area altogether. Uh, um, and given the rural nature of the, the area, it's not unusual that Every house, I don't know if any of you have driven out there at all, but as you're driving out Telegraph, everyone has some sort of a huge shed, which I'm not, obviously that's not my, your concern or mine, but it's not unusual to see that. Um, and we're just trying to make the place look nicer, look better. We love Davenport. We we're, we work here. We Our kids are growing up here. We, we have grandkids, and we're just, uh, uh, you know, trying to make it better, I guess. Um, and, yeah, we, we're... Literally, Utah is like the city limits, so it's like eighth of a mile or whatever. It's, so it's like right right on the border. <laughs> so I don't know if you guys have any questions for me or. <clears throat> yeah, just looking at things here. What What is the type of architecture? Is it just like steel siding and a steel roof? And Yep, correct, okay. yep. And we're, we're the, the biggest reason we uh, right now, if if this all, all gets through, we we are trying to actually purchase my parents' motorhome, <laughs> which is significant. It's like a forty, roughly forty-two feet, and that's why we're trying to do this. So we we're, we're we're ahead of the game. If we if this does go through and we do buy theirs, then we will get rid of ours. And then if we did a if we did a twenty by forty, we, we'd be sticking out about three feet. So. Um, and, and, and I've had all, actually all of our neighbors have come over. This is my wife, Melissa Trimble, by the way. And, and she's talked to some of the neighbors. I've talked to some of the neighbors and they all are like, oh my gosh, yeah, we didn't know you had to go through all this to get a building, which is okay. I'm not saying that, but uh, they're, they're all for it and they all think it's great. So, but. What, Mr. Trimble, what are all the assets that you, you want to put in that? in that building well we got our rv um i have a tractor with a bucket and loader on it and everything that we 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 go out to her play uh her mother her mom's my mother-in-law's and we'd have like gardening equipment like a tiller and uh, a plow and a drag and all that um so we'd like to get that inside um we have my truck uh, the van that we told behind our motorhome uh, lawn equipment um snow removal equipment um just just stuff that i don't want to get rusted out and and out in the elements. We, we had an instance a couple of years ago where our RV was sitting out and, and my, uh, some squirrels got in there and chewed up some wiring and hoses and it was like $4,000 worth of work. So anything I can do to prevent <laughs> that from happening again, I would <clears throat> love to get that done. And, and if you guys have ever been out there, it's you're out there. It's it's all agricultural. There's there's fields all around me and field mice and squirrels and everything's getting, you know, so it's <laughs> it can be a pricey thing living out there, but we love it. Um, it's quiet, nice area. So, Are any of those assets necessary for, for the way you earn a living? Uh, no. Nope, it's just cleaning my driveway. We go out to her mom's and do her driveway in the first snow removal, I guess I should say. And then we have, she's got a garden, and we kind of help her out too, so. No.
Yeah, and actually, if you drive by there and you look where the shed's going to be, I mean, you, I don't even think you can, you would see it for maybe one second if you're really looking. So I don't even know if anyone's even going to really notice it. But Have you had conversations with your neighbor that, that lives, uh, I guess, is it right behind you? Is that to the north? Yep. Um, and he, that, that person has no trouble whatsoever with the kind of structure you're talking about putting in place. To be completely honest with you, that person is my mom and dad. <laughs> so they're all for it. They're like, oh, please, yes, get your get your shed built. We're going to put stuff in it. Well, not really, but so, yeah, they, they have no problem at all. <laughs> I noticed one of the on one of the aerial shots that there's a transmission line that runs through there. Yep. And Scott, yes, we're we actually had this. We had the shed. I don't know if you can see where that uh, like the, the dirt piece. That's where we're originally going to put it. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. And then they they told me we had to stay 30 feet away from that, so so we had to move it up and away out of, out of the um, that area. Is that the easement size? Okay, because yeah. they vary. Yeah, so I was, so you're well outside of the easement area. Yeah, we okay. we called Mid American, um, and as long as I'm 30 feet of, away from the middle of that those lines. Sure, very good. And we're back. I think it was like 38. Between 38 and 40 feet from there, so. Well, yeah, you can see the motorhome there. Yeah, and I've had tree branches falling out of there, so I'm trying to move it around my property to keep damage from happening. But, uh, so yeah, I think it just it just make an improvement to the whole area out there. Once we get it, or if, if we get it approved, we can make it a lot cleaner and nicer. So the with the 800 square foot building that you would be allowed to build uh, it's pretty much the only thing you'd be able to put in there is the is your motorhome our current motorhome yes right yep and maybe one maybe the, the lawnmower maybe next one i suppose mm -hmm. all right any other questions from board members can we go back that showed the adjacent the the slide that showed the adjacent properties. Notification. There we go. Was, it, was there another one? They're all in here. The, the, the people at the end of Telegraph in Utah actually own this farmhouse that's to the be the west of us, and they rent it out. But all around there is, is uh, cornfield, basically. And then to the east of us, is a rental place, um, and then on the other side of that driveway is an, is another house. So, what is that? Looks like a driveway that curves around to the. That goes top. up. There's a house directly behind us, which is my parents. Okay. That goes up and around there. Oh, okay. That white that yeah. white shed is not theirs. It's part of the 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 rental house. I don't know. It's kind of in between our house. <laughs> I, don't, I can point to it, but. Um, so that so that is not their shed. It's a, it's another shed that's detached. But that's from, their house, up directly north. Yeah, yeah, okay. like straight up from the the red. Well, no, that's the shed. That's and the shed. Left of over that is, to the left. Yeah, yeah that's their house. Okay. house. Okay. Do you know the size of that shed? Uh, the white shed. He told me. I don't. I don't. I think it's. I thought he said it's like 30 by 40. And that belongs to? That belongs property. To, to, the, to the property right to the east of us. To the, okay. Okay. So, so the middle of the three? The middle of the three, yep. Yep. Correct. <laughs> okay. Yeah, actually, they have the 6232 Telegraph Road is actually my parents' house. That's not Andrea Bakji, um anymore. That that has changed, like, in February. I think they bought it. But that's the same person that has the rental house now. So they had all three of those properties, and then we bought one, and then my dad bought the other one. So. Okay. Any other questions? All right. 
Thank you. Okay. Um, have a seat. All right. Thanks um, for your time. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, so we don't have much of an audience, but so mm -hmm. my next questions are if there's anyone in the audience who wish to speak in favor of the request. And anyone in the audience wishing to speak opposed to the request? Okay. Um, so our, our next step is if you have any final comments, that's usually provided if anyone wants, gets up and speaks in favor or opposed, but having none, unless something's jumped into your head. Okay, so no final comments. Okay, board discussion. No, I think it's admirable that, that uh, the Trimbles want to clean up their lot. I mean, they've, I was out there, and, you know, they have a lot of equipment and assets back there that could stand to, to be undercover, and it would certainly improve the, the appearances out there. Um, outbuildings are not out of character at all. Um, again, just, just from a visual, you can't really speak to the, the compliance of those, those buildings, but, but nonetheless... I think it, it's the size of the building would be a concern to me if I lived in that in the house directly uh, north uh, there behind you. Um, and I understand that if your parents are there, they they may uh, they, they may feel feel good about that. But if if they ever moved and somebody else moved in there, they may feel differently about it. Yeah, that's my concern of who uh, who owns that property. Is that I mean someday that will change. Right, um, it always does for one reason or another. So, it's it's great today, but you know, will it be in the future? Yeah, I I kind of struggle with this mainly because of the fact that it's in such a rural area. Even though it's within city limits, um, it certainly appears that it's a rural agricultural area. And fully understand that the code states, um, you know, limits the size. But I, you know, that's to me that's specific to a very urban setting. Mm -hmm. um, even though, uh, you know, we have quite a few other outbuildings in the area with, with your neighbors and that, uh, whether they're conforming or non-conforming, legal or legal, um, I guess is, is doesn't come into play. However, uh, it certainly wouldn't be out of character. So I, yeah, I really struggle with this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my um, my concern gets to be with the uh, principal use of the property. Mm -hmm. So um, that's one thing to say. All right, I'm not in, in this agricultural environment. Maybe I'm not too tight to the fifty percent. Um, but at the same time, you know, you could you could exceed. The 800 square foot, and maybe it's a thousand square foot or 1,200 square foot, but but now we're building something that's actually larger than the home itself, yeah. and that that becomes more of a sticking point for me. Uh, yeah, uh, I concur with that point, Chairman. Um, and so I guess I would ask the board: Would the board be um, more more inclined to approve something like this if if it was just a, a smaller percentage over? Yeah. I think what we would have to do is is act on this petition, right? And then, um, but just for if, guidance for the if it were denied, they could um, certainly present something less than current, um, but maybe it's still more than fifty percent. And it's so a, a different petition would have to come back in front right. of us. I don't think we can stipulate that during. Right. But Mallory, do you have any mm -hmm. guidance to come back within? Um, is it a year? If they are denied today, they can come back one year later with something similar. But if they want to come back with a new idea or new plan, within that year, it has to be substantially different. And this would not, a, a smaller size, but still over the allowed size would not be substantially different. But, but we can't, we cannot motion to approve up to a certain size. We can either approve or decline this motion, this That's petition. Right. And we okay. would caution you against making any amendments like that on the fly because we've had issues in the past where yeah. it gets uh, murky. That's what I thought we'd either, we, we rule on this petition up or down and if they want to do something different. If you are inclined to table it, you could table it and we could modify it. Mm. And that would be, that would be acceptable to modify the square footage. 
Yeah. But the petitioner would have to do that. The petitioner, yeah, I would, I would ask the petitioner request the tabling of it. Um, and then they would have an opportunity to work with staff to determine what would be a more reasonable use so that staff could generate another report. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I'm supportive of that. So, so this is where we're at, if I understand. Um, if we, if we vote on it now and decline it, they cannot come back for a year unless it's substantially different. Correct. Or we could ask them um, if they are willing to, to request a table it and come back with a modified request that we could hear much sooner. Yes. Okay. And if they're, and if they don't table, then we move forward okay. with ruling on this one. Mm -hmm. Is that the request you want to make? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to make that request to see if they're willing to table. All right. Um, so, John, petitioner, could... do you understand what table means? I mean, just uh, instead of voting today, we would postpone it and have another meeting, and then have a different a vote on a, um, a differently worded request. So the different words would be the square footage. Right. You do not have to request the tabling, but if you would like to request the tabling at this point. You could do that. So, John, John, why don't you go ahead and stand back at the podium so I can talk to you and and we can hear you. So, where where the board is at, um, we would we ask that uh, to see if you're willing to to request of us to table the petition. At which point, you can reconsider your request, and then it can come back in front of us, or we can continue as is and vote up or down and if we vote down that'll be it'll be a year before you can come back unless you came back with something like completely substantially different but if you just came back and said yeah i want to do the same thing same place a little bit smaller um we'll talk to you next summer so um so would you be willing to table this and and perhaps revise something that we could look at in the near future um I'm not sure. In the only reason we're kind of under a little distress right now is because we had actually hired somebody to do this, and he, he had already bought all the um, product to put this up, and then, and but I told him, "Did you get a permit?" He says he already got a permit, and then come to find out, he did not get a permit, and so we actually have all the product sitting in our backyard, which is not your fault by any means. Right. Obviously, it's nothing you guys did. We. This guy had said, oh, I built hundreds of hundreds of sheds out here and never had a problem and blah, 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 blah. And so now we're kind of, that's worse. I don't know if one of the pictures showed some of the product sitting there oh. already. Um, and then again, uh, nothing, it's not your fault. It's my stupid mistake. So um, I, I, I'm not sure how I could, we would be out a significant amount of money. And again, it's nothing you did. It's not your fault, obviously. I'm throwing myself at the mercy of you guys, but uh, uh, so yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if I would. I'm not sure I could change it enough. May, to, I, may I, Mr. Chairman? Excuse me, sure. um, Mallard. But let me know if I'm stepping out of bounds here. So where we're at right now is basically the. I think that the board is not totally supportive of your request. And, and the asking of you to table it and re refine your request yep. may be more acceptable. I, if, yeah. if, are you fully understanding of that? And, and I, don't, I don't know that, I don't know that, although we can say that we, were, that we wouldn't approve it, um, okay. it's, it's just you have to understand that if we don't, then it's a year before it could come back in front of us. And, and I would say it's, it's a risk, so. Or if, if you ask, we will we will continue and, and make a motion and, and vote on it now as as written. Okay. Uh, what's your thought? You're talking about the old house. If we request a table, can, can, can you come up and? This is my yeah. wife. Well, yeah. If we request a table and come back with 
something that's adjusted but still tries to use the materials we have, I mean, that's where I struggle. Um, and it's not enough of a change. Yeah, I don't know. It's a you tough know, one for everybody. Well, yeah, not, not knowing the materials, I don't know that I'm in a position to give you guidance on what can be reused, you know, if, you know, the, the structures, the beams, you know, I, I don't know, if, you know, if, if it's, you know, gables or, um, right. yeah, trusses already built and so then you can't change the width, you know, right? so I, I'm not in a position to provide that guidance. Okay. Um, There's no guarantee that the board would vote in favor of anything over the allowable size. Right. And if it was not over the allowable size, it would need to come to the board. But the code is a bright line rule. And the board has a history of applying the bright line rule of the uh, square footage allowed. Right. Yeah, in, in the end, our, our um, what's the right word, our um, guidance is to is to follow the, the the strict application of the zoning laws. That's that's our I, I guess our mission. Um, we are trying to follow the right paths and do the right things by right. being here and requesting and not just constructing a structure. Um, but at this time, we would uh, request a table. Okay. Do we do we vote on? Can I make one point of clarification? You can request a table and come back with the same request for the vote. What right. this does is give you a chance to review. Right. right. Okay. So you just, yeah. Thank so you, so you could go back to your builder with these materials. What what can we do? And if it's well, it's this or nothing. You could come back with the exact same request, and we could vote on it then. So you're not out anything as far as that goes. Thank you for that clarification. Yeah. Thanks, Laura. Yeah, so you would move the table to a certain date. I think staff would have a calendar of when that would be available. Do you have a calendar? Yes. Any thoughts on how long it would take you to discuss with your builder? Since we're going smaller, we don't need to notify, so we can go to the next cycle two weeks from now. Okay. Which is in here. Today's date is the 10th. So it'd be August 24th. So you would move the table to August 24th. Okay. And let's do a roll call vote for it. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to table this uh, HB 23 12 to the meeting on 24 August? Motion to table H. I can't read it. HB 23 12. HB 23-12 to our next item. Okay. Second. All right. Um, did you say roll call or what's ro roll call? Gellert? Yes. Boyd Carlson? Yes. And Blumker? Yes. And Darwin? Yes. All right. So we'll table it and we'll see you guys back in two weeks. Um, I'll remind uh, board members since this is active and we can't have discussions outside of everyone being part of the discussion that it's not to be discussed. Thank you. Thank so you much. for your time. Um, we have we have no other business. Um, so I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Stand Aye. adjourned. <laughs>